It was a typical Wednesday evening when Lisa returned home after a long day at work. She dropped her keys on the kitchen counter, feeling the weight of exhaustion settle in her bones. The day had been particularly grueling. Meetings that dragged on, relentless emails, and deadlines that seemed to come faster than she could handle. All she wanted was to relax with a glass of wine and a good book. As she sank into the familiar embrace of her worn-out couch, the soft glow of the lamp cast a warm light over the room. Lisa took a deep breath, letting the tension release from her shoulders. But that evening, the stillness was pierced by an unsettling chill that seemed to creep through the air. She brushed it off, convincing herself it was just the draft from the old windows in her apartment. Later that night, as she prepared for bed, Lisa couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The shadows in her bedroom danced in ways they shouldn't, elongated and twisted by the moonlight filtering through the curtains. She, she pulled the blankets up to her chin, hoping the warmth would fend off the sense of unease that had settled over her. Sleep came slowly, with her mind swirling through the events of the day. A few hours later, Lisa jolted awake, a sudden noise pulling her from the depths of slumber. Heart racing, she listened intently, straining to hear over the sound of her own heartbeat. It was faint, a soft rustling sound coming from the hallway outside her bedroom. She held her breath, trying to determine whether her imagination was playing tricks on her. Just as she was about to convince herself it was nothing, she heard it again. A gentle thump, like something heavy being dragged across the wooden floor. Panic washed over her as she sat up in bed, her mind racing through scenarios. Was it an intruder? A figment of her imagination? She grabbed her phone, illuminating the darkness with its harsh light, and cautiously swung her legs over the side of the bed. The chill of the wooden floor made her shiver, but she took a deep breath and steadied herself. As she made her way to the door, the noise stopped. The silence felt oppressive, almost as if the house itself was holding its breath. She opened her bedroom door slowly, wincing as the hinges creaked in protest. The hallway stretched out before her, dimly lit by a single light bulb that flickered overhead, casting unsettling shadows along the walls. Hello? She called out, her voice barely above a whisper. There was no response, just the faint echo of her own words fading into the darkness. She stepped forward, her heart pounding in her chest. Every fiber of her being screamed at her to turn back, but curiosity pushed her onward. The hallway felt longer than she remembered, the walls seeming to close in around her. Lisa reached the end and paused at the door leading to the staircase, which creaked ominously as she leaned against it. She hesitated, contemplating whether to descend into the lower floor where her living room and kitchen lay. But just as she turned to head back, something caught her eye, a shadow darting across the wall at the far end of the hall. Her breath hitched as she froze in place. The shadow was unlike anything she had seen before, dark, fluid, and shifting as if it had a life of its own. It didn't have a defined shape, just an ominous presence that loomed in the dim light. Lisa's heart raced, and she felt an overwhelming urge to flee, but her legs felt like lead. As if sensing her fear, the shadow grew larger, creeping towards her, tendrils of darkness extending in her direction. It was then that she realized she could feel it, an icy chill that seeped into her bones, pulling her deeper into a state of dread. Get away, she screamed, finally breaking free from the paralysis of fear. She turned and sprinted back toward her bedroom, slamming the door shut behind her. She pressed her back against it, panting, trying to steady her breath. But the oppressive chill remained, seeping through the cracks around the door. With trembling hands, she reached for her phone to call for help, but her fingers fumbled, dropping it to the floor. It clattered away, the screen going dark as it slipped beneath her bed. Panic washed over her as she realized she was utterly alone, with no means of escape. The soft rustling began again, but this time it sounded closer, right outside her bedroom door. She squeezed her eyes shut, willing the nightmare to end. Suddenly, the doorknob rattled violently and Lisa's eyes shot open in horror. The door shook as something on the other side began to push against it. She held her breath, trying to keep quiet, but the terror coursing through her veins made it impossible. The shadow whispered her name, a low, sinister sound that sent chills down her spine. Lisa, let me in. The voice was hauntingly familiar, yet twisted and distorted. It echoed in her mind, reminding her of someone she had lost years ago, 
her younger brother, Tommy, who had tragically passed away. The memory surged through her like a wave, drowning her in guilt and sorrow. Tommy? She whispered, her voice trembling. Is that you? Let me in, the voice pleaded, more insistent now. I'm cold, Lisa. Tears streamed down her cheeks, so she remembered the night he had died, the darkness that enveloped their family afterward. Was this really him? Or was it the shadow, twisting her memories into something sinister? I can't, she cried, her heart breaking. You're gone. The door stopped shaking and silence fell over the room. For a moment, Lisa thought she had imagined it all. But then she noticed the shadow creeping beneath the door, a dark silhouette pulsating like a living entity. Her heart raced as she backed away from the door, stumbling over her own feet. Suddenly, the door burst open and the darkness flooded in like a tidal wave, engulfing her. She screamed as it enveloped her, pulling her into the depths of an abyss where the memories of her brother twisted into something nightmarish. And in that moment, as she felt the coldness consume her, she understood. The shadow was not just a ghost, it was a manifestation of her unresolved grief and the darkness that lurked within her. The room grew silent once more, the only evidence of Lisa's presence, a, a single flickering light in the now empty hallway, where shadows danced mockingly, waiting for their next victim. Story number two. The rain hammered down, creating a symphony of chaos on the roof of the old station wagon. Mark and Jenna were en route to a remote cabin and escaped from the grind of city life. Their excitement was palpable. Even as the dark clouds rolled in, a portent of the storm to come. They laughed and talked about how perfect the weekend would be, unaware that they were driving straight into a tale of terror. As they passed through the dense woods, the GPS began to glitch, the screen flickering between the map and static. This thing is useless, Mark grumbled, swatting the device. Just then, the car's headlights illuminated a figure standing by the side of the road. Did you see that? Jenna gasped, gripping the door handle. Yeah, but it's probably just a hitchhiker, Mark replied dismissively. We're not stopping. They continued driving, but an uneasy feeling settled over them. Mark turned the radio up, trying to drown out the creeping dread. Just then, the headlights caught the figure again. This time, they could see her more clearly. A woman in a white dress soaked from the rain, her hair matted against her face. Okay, that's creepy, Mark said, his voice low. Should we? No, just keep going, Jenna insisted, her heart racing. As they rounded a bend, the storm intensified, lashing rain against the windshield like a thousand tiny fingers. The visibility dropped and suddenly, the car sputtered. Mark glanced at the fuel gauge. It was dangerously close to empty. Perfect timing, he muttered, pulling over to the side of the road. Let's see if we can figure out what's wrong. Jenna clutched her phone, but there was no service. Do you think we should have stopped for that woman? She asked nervously. No, Mark replied firmly. There's nothing we can do. We'll just wait it out. But the minutes ticked by like hours, and the rain showed no signs of stopping. Then, as if summoned by their growing unease, a soft knock echoed against the passenger window. Mark jumped, his heart pounding. What was that? Jenna whispered, eyes wide. Mark hesitated before turning to look. The woman from before stood there, drenched and ghostly pale. Her eyes bore into him, and a chill ran down his spine. Roll down the window, she said softly. No way, Mark said, shaking his head. Please, she urged, her voice barely above a whisper. I need your help. Jenna's heart twisted with sympathy. Mark, she looks like she's in trouble. We can't just leave her out there. Reluctantly, Mark rolled down the window a crack. What do you want? My car broke down a little further down the road, she explained, her voice trembling. I was trying to get to town for help, but I was scared of the storm. Can you take me? Mark glanced at Jenna, who nodded encouragingly. Okay, fine, get in. The woman slid into the back seat her presence filling the car with an unshakable heaviness. She was beautiful, but her beauty felt haunting. Thank you, she murmured, looking out at the relentless rain. As they started driving, Jenna felt compelled to ask, what's your name? Lila, she replied. I used to live around here a long time ago. It's been a while since I've been back. Mark frowned. What do you mean? Is there a reason you came back? Lila's expression darkened, and for a moment, it seemed as if the air grew colder. I came to see something, she said, her voice barely above a whisper, something I lost. The tension in the car escalated as the storm continued to rage. The headlights flickered, casting ominous shadows in the gloom. 
You okay back there? Mark asked, glancing in the rearview mirror. But when he looked, Lila had vanished. Did you see that? Jenna exclaimed, panic rising in her voice. See what? Mark asked, his hands tightening around the steering wheel. She was just there. Where did she go? Mark turned around, but the back seat was empty. A wave of dread washed over him. I don't know, maybe she just left? But deep down, he felt that something was terribly wrong. Suddenly, the car's engine began to sputter again, the dashboard lights flickering ominously. Not now, Mark shouted, slamming his hands against the wheel. The car lurched, then stalled completely, uh, the lights dying in the downpour. Great, we're stuck, Jenna cried, looking around in fear. The rain drummed louder, a terrifying reminder of their isolation. Mark tried restarting the car, but it wouldn't budge. As they sat there, a soft tapping echoed again, this time from the trunk. What is that? Jenna whispered, her eyes wide with terror. I don't know, Mark replied, his voice shaking. He reached for the door but stopped when he heard Lila's voice, soft and sorrowful. Help me. Please, Jenna gasped. It's her. She's in the trunk. No way, Mark shouted, panic clawing at his throat. What do we do? Open it, Jenna insisted, her heart pounding. Mark's hands trembled as he unlatched the trunk. It creaked open, revealing darkness that seemed to stretch endlessly. Lila, he called hesitantly. As he peered inside, a cold hand shot out, grabbing his wrist with a grip of ice. You found me, Lila whispered, her voice echoing in the dark. Jenna screamed, stumbling backward. Mark, close it. But he couldn't move. He felt as if he were being drawn into a nightmare, the cold creeping up his arm. Lila's face emerged from the shadows, her eyes filled with sorrow and a twisted hunger. I need you to take me home, she murmured. Suddenly, Mark realized with horror what Lila meant. No, you're dead, she smiled sadly, her features shifting and distorting. You can't escape what you owe me. Help me find peace. Mark finally pulled his arm free, slamming the trunk shut as Jenna shrieked. They jumped back into the front seat, but the car remained dead, the storm howling around them. We need to get out of here, Jenna yelled, her voice laced with terror. As they scrambled out, the rain began to thin. They ran toward the trees, searching for a way to escape. But as they reached the edge of the road, they heard the laughter, a haunting, echoing sound that chilled them to the bone. Lila! They shouted in unison, but the laughter only grew louder. Then, in a flash of lightning, they saw her standing by the roadside, her white dress billowing in the wind, eyes gleaming with a malevolent light. You can't leave me, she cried her voice filling the air. In that moment, Mark and Jenna knew they would never escape. They were part of her story now, trapped in an endless cycle of terror. The storm raged on, and as the rain fell heavier, they could hear her whisper, help me. Story number three. The night was darker than usual as Mia drove along the winding road leading to Ravenswood Hill. The moon hid behind thick clouds, casting an eerie gloom over the landscape. She had heard stories about the old Ravenswood estate, nestled at the top of the hill, but her friends had dared her to spend the night there, and Mia never backed down from a challenge. As she parked her car at the estate's entrance, a chill ran down her spine. The estate loomed before her, a dilapidated Victorian mansion, its windows shattered like missing teeth. Vines crept up the stone walls, and the wind whistled through the empty halls like a mournful spirit. Ignoring her apprehension, Mia grabbed her flashlight and stepped out into the thickening darkness. The path to the front door was overgrown, the grass tall and wild. With each step, the whispers of the night surrounded her. Rustling leaves, distant animal calls, and the soft crunch of her feet on the gravel. Mia reached the entrance, her heart pounding in her chest. The door creaked ominously as she pushed it open, the sound echoing through the empty hall. Inside, the air was stale, thick with the scent of mildew and decay. Dust motes danced in her flashlight beam as she moved further into the mansion. Each room was a snapshot of a bygone era, faded wallpaper, broken furniture, and remnants of a life once lived. She felt a strange pull toward the grand staircase, its banister slick with dust. Curiosity ignited, Mia ascended the stairs. On the second floor, a long hallway stretched before her, doors lining either side. She opened the first door on her left, revealing a bedroom frozen in time. An old rocking chair sat in the corner, creaking gently as if someone had just left it. The bed was unmade, sheets yellowed with age. Mia stepped inside, her heart racing, feeling as if she were being watched. 
Suddenly, a low whisper echoed through the room, chilling her to the bone. Get out! The voice was barely audible, a faint hiss that sent shivers down her spine. Mia spun around, her flashlight beam sweeping the room, but she found nothing. Just her breathing, heavy in the silence. Deciding she was being foolish, Mia laughed nervously to herself and moved to the next room. This one was a small library, books scattered across the floor, some pages yellowed and torn. As she walked in, the air felt colder, a sudden drop in temperature that made her shiver. A book on the desk caught her eye. It was open to a page describing the estate's dark history. According to the text, Ravenswood Hill had once been home to the wealthy Hawthorne family. Tragedy struck when the youngest daughter, Eliza, disappeared one stormy night. Legend had it that her spirit haunted the estate, searching for her lost soul. Mia shuddered, glancing around the room, half expecting to see the girl's ghostly figure appear. Just then, the door behind her slammed shut, rattling on its hinges. Panic surged through her as she rushed to the door, pulling at the knob with all her strength. It wouldn't budge. She was trapped. The whispers grew louder, echoing in her ears, and she felt an icy breath on her neck. Leave now. Heart pounding, Mia backed away from the door, her mind racing. She turned to the window, hoping to escape through it. But as she approached, she froze. Outside, silhouetted against the moonlight, stood a figure, a girl in a white dress, her long hair cascading down her back. Eliza. Help me, the girl pleaded, her voice barely above a whisper. Please, help me. Mia felt a strange connection, as if Eliza were reaching out to her. She hesitated, torn between fear and a sudden urge to understand what happened to this lost soul. Gathering her courage, she spoke. How can I help you? Eliza's eyes widened, a glimmer of hope sparking within them. Find my locket. It holds my memories, my peace. Without it, I am lost. Where is it? Mia asked, her voice steady despite the fear curling in her gut. The girl pointed toward the attic, her expression becoming somber. In the attic, please hurry. Mia felt an overwhelming urge to help this girl, even as dread washed over her. She knew she was risking everything, but Eliza's plea felt genuine. Gathering her courage, Mia turned toward the attic door at the end of the hall. The climb to the attic was treacherous, the steps creaking beneath her weight. When she finally reached the attic, a heavy silence enveloped her. Dust hung in the air, illuminated by a shaft of moonlight breaking through a cracked window. Boxes were strewn about, forgotten relics of the past. As Mia began searching, she could feel Eliza's presence, guiding her. It's there, the whisper urged. Mia turned her flashlight toward a dusty trunk in the corner, its latch rusted shut. With trembling hands, she pried it open. Inside, an assortment of trinkets lay scattered, old letters, faded photographs, and finally a delicate silver locket. Mia picked it up, its surface cool against her skin. The whispers grew louder, swirling around her like a storm. Thank you. Eliza's voice echoed through the attic, filling Mia with warmth. As she opened the locket, a wave of memories flooded her mind. Happy moments, laughter, and a family lost to time. The air shimmered around her and she felt Eliza's presence growing stronger. But as Mia looked up, the room began to shift. Shadows danced along the walls, forming dark shapes that twisted and turned. The whispers turned into screams, a cacophony of anguish. No, don't take her. Mia's heart raced as she realized the house was fighting back, desperate to keep Eliza trapped. I'm here to help, she shouted, clutching the locket tightly. Leave! Eliza's voice pleaded, now filled with desperation. With a surge of adrenaline, Mia bolted for the door, the screams echoing in her ears. Uh, she dashed down the attic stairs, racing through the house as it trembled with rage. She could feel the malevolence of the estate trying to reclaim what was once its own. Finally, she burst through the front door and into the night, gasping for breath. The air felt different outside, lighter. The whispers faded into the wind and the pressure that had weighed on her chest lifted. Mia turned back toward the mansion, the locket held tightly in her grasp. The figure of Eliza appeared at the window, a faint smile gracing her lips. Thank you, she mouthed, before fading into the darkness. The estate stood silent, the malevolent energy dissipating into the night. With trembling hands, Mia got into her car, her heart still racing from the encounter. As she drove away from Ravenswood Hill, she felt a profound sense of peace wash over her. Eliza was free and Mia knew she would never forget the night she faced the darkness of Ravenswood Hill. Story number four. 
In the bustling city of Eldridge, where skyscrapers pierced the sky and the streets buzzed with life, there was a hidden corner of the town that seemed to have been forgotten by time. Among the rows of modern cafes and trendy boutiques stood a small, old-fashioned diner called Maggie's. Its flickering neon sign barely illuminated the cracked pavement outside, and the interior was adorned with vintage decor, checkerboard floors, chrome stools, and a jukebox that occasionally played tunes from a bygone era. Maggie, the diner's owner, was a warm-hearted woman in her 60s with a penchant for storytelling. Regulars flocked to her diner, drawn by her delicious homemade pies and the comforting ambiance she had cultivated over the years. However, the diner had a reputation that left some wary. Rumor had it that it was haunted by the ghost of a former delivery driver, Jake, who had mysteriously vanished one stormy night several decades ago. His ghost was said to roam the diner, especially around closing time, reliving the last moments of his life. One rainy evening, a group of four friends, Emma, Lucas, Jenna, and Mark, decided to stop by Maggie's after a long day of work. The sky was overcast, and the sound of raindrops against the diner's windows created a cozy atmosphere inside. As they settled into their booth, they couldn't help but overhear the older patrons exchanging ghost stories about the infamous delivery driver. Jake was a good kid, an elderly man at the counter said, his voice low and gravelly. Never missed a delivery until that fateful night. They say he took one last order to the old Willow house, but he never came back. Emma, intrigued, leaned in. What happened at the Willow house? The old man shook his head. No one knows for sure. Some say he met with foul play, others think he just got lost. But people claim they've seen his ghost driving around town late at night, delivering food like he used to. The friends exchanged glances, the excitement of the story sending a thrill through them. Jenna, ever the adventurous spirit, leaned forward. We should do it. Let's see if we can find the Willow House and uncover the truth about Jake. Are you crazy? Lucas laughed, but Emma's eyes lit up with curiosity. Come on, it could be fun. Plus, we can grab a slice of Maggie's famous pie before we go, Emma urged, her excitement contagious. After finishing their meals, they paid the bill and stepped out into the rain-soaked streets. The diner was warm and inviting, but the thought of an adventure pulled them toward the unknown. They hopped into Jenna's car, navigating the winding roads that led to the outskirts of Eldridge. As they drove deeper into the woods, the trees loomed overhead, their branches swaying ominously in the wind. Emma squinted through the windshield, scanning for any sign of the infamous Willow House. The rain had slowed to a drizzle, but the eerie atmosphere only added to their anticipation. After several minutes, they finally spotted it, a dilapidated Victorian house shrouded in vines and shadows. The once grand structure appeared to, to be frozen in time, with broken windows and a sagging porch that seemed to invite them in. This must be it, Jenna said, her voice barely above a whisper. They parked the car and approached the house cautiously, the air thick with tension. The porch creaked under their weight, and a chill ran down Emma's spine as she stepped inside. The interior was dark and musty, filled with the remnants of a long-abandoned life. Dust-covered furniture and cobwebs hung from the ceiling like forgotten memories. As they explored the house, the atmosphere grew heavier, and the sound of dripping water echoed through the halls. Do you think Jake is really here? Mark asked, trying to lighten the mood. Only one way to find out, Jenna said, grinning. Let's split up and see if we can find anything. Emma hesitated, but eventually agreed. They each took a different path through the house, the air growing colder as they ventured deeper into the shadows. Emma wandered into a dimly lit room that appeared to have once been a dining area. The table was set for a meal that had never taken place, and the chairs were pushed back as if the occupants had left in a hurry. Suddenly, she heard a faint noise behind her, a soft rustling like fabric brushing against itself. Her heart raced as she turned around, but there was nothing there. She shook her head, trying to dismiss her imagination, and stepped closer to the window. The rain tapped lightly against the glass, but when she looked outside, she saw a figure standing near the edge of the property, a man dressed in a vintage delivery uniform, holding a stack of boxes. Guys, she called, rushing back to find her friends. I think I saw something. They regrouped in the living room, and Emma recounted what she had seen. It looked just like Jake, she exclaimed. Lucas raised an eyebrow. You sure it wasn't just a trick of the light? 
No, it felt real, Emma insisted, her voice trembling with excitement and fear. Let's go check it out, Jenna said, her adventurous spirit flaring. They stepped outside, but the figure had vanished. Instead, a cold breeze swept through the yard, sending a shiver down their spines. Maybe we should head back, Mark suggested, glancing nervously at the darkened windows of the house. But just as they were about to leave, a faint sound reached their ears, a soft honking like an old delivery truck. They turned to see headlights flickering in the distance, illuminating the trees. The sound grew louder, echoing through the night as an old, rusty truck emerged from the darkness, the engine sputtering and groaning. That's got to be Jake's ghost, Jenna said, her eyes wide with excitement. The truck pulled up to the curb and the engine died with a cough. The driver's door creaked open and a figure emerged, wearing the same vintage uniform Emma had seen earlier. The ghostly man looked tired as if he had been driving for days. Need a delivery, he asked, his voice echoing with a hollow sound. The friends exchanged nervous glances, unsure whether to run or stay. Emma took a step forward, her curiosity overpowering her fear. Jake, she called out. The ghostly driver turned to her, his eyes glowing faintly in the dim light. I need help, he said, a plea in his voice. I have unfinished business. What do you need? Emma asked, her heart racing. Jake gestured toward the back of the truck, cake where several boxes were piled high. These packages, they never reached their destination. I can't move on until they are delivered. The friends looked at each other, a mixture of fear and intrigue washing over them. We can help, Jenna offered, stepping closer. Where do they need to go? Jake's expression softened, and he smiled sadly. To the families who loved them, they're filled with memories, things I never got to deliver. Without hesitation, the friends climbed into the back of the truck, their hearts pounding with the thrill of the unknown. As they opened the boxes, they found old photographs, toys, and handwritten letters. Each item held a story, a fragment of the lives Jake had once touched. Emma picked up a small teddy bear, its fur worn from years of love. This belongs to a little girl, she said softly, her heart aching at the thought of the child who had waited for her toy to arrive. Let's find their homes, Lucas said, determination in his voice. The truck roared back to life, and with Jake guiding them, they set off into the night, delivering the boxes to the families who had once waited in vain. With each stop, Jake's spirit seemed to grow lighter, the weight of his past lifting with every package delivered. As they pulled up to the final destination, a modest house with a porch light glowing warmly in the dark, Jake turned to them. Thank you, he said his voice filled with gratitude. You've given me peace. The friends stepped out of the truck, the moon shining brightly overhead as they approached the door. They knocked softly, and a woman opened it, tears streaming down her face as she recognized the box in their hands. It's from my son, she whispered, collapsing into their arms. As the friends shared the moment, Jake's spirit began to fade, a serene smile on his face, Thank you for helping me finish my journey, he said, his voice growing faint. The friends watched in awe as he vanished into the night, leaving behind only the soft sound of a truck engine echoing through the streets. They stood there for a moment, still processing what had just happened. As they made their way back to Jenna's car, Emma felt a sense of fulfillment wash over her. They had not only helped Jake find peace, but they had also created a connection to the past something that would forever bind them together. The rain began to fall again as they drove back to Eldridge, but this time it felt refreshing, like a cleansing of old memories. The haunted tales that once surrounded Maggie's diner had transformed into a story of hope and redemption, a reminder that even in darkness, light can be found. Story number five. In the heart of a small town stood an old library, its once grand architecture now draped in a shroud of neglect. The windows were dust covered, and the wooden doors creaked as they opened, revealing a musty interior filled with the scent of old paper and forgotten tales. Despite its disrepair, the library was a sanctuary for Amelia, a dedicated researcher who spent her nights poring over ancient texts and local lore. One evening, as a thunderstorm brewed outside, Amelia arrived at the library later than usual. The dim light flickered overhead, creating dancing shadows that seemed to whisper secrets in the corners of the room. She settled into her favorite nook by a window, surrounded by books on the supernatural and local ghost stories. 
The hours slipped away as she immersed herself in her research, lost in tales of long-forgotten spirits that roamed the town. As the storm raged outside, a powerful gust of wind shook the building, causing a nearby shelf to tremble. Amelia's heart raced, but she brushed it off as her imagination running wild. Suddenly, she heard it, a soft whisper, barely audible over the sound of the rain. Help me? The voice seemed to come from the back of the library, where the shadows were thickest. Her curiosity peaked. Amelia stood up and followed the sound, the whispers growing louder with each step. Help me. Amelia's heart pounded in her chest. She reached the back of the library, where an old section of books lay untouched. The shelves loomed over her like ancient guardians, and the air felt heavy with a sense of foreboding. Hello, she called out, her voice trembling. There was no response, just the sound of rain hitting the roof and the whispers echoing through the air. She moved closer to the shelves, peering between the dusty volumes. Just then, a book fell to the floor, landing open on a page that spoke of a tragic tale, a girl named Eliza who had vanished without a trace decades ago. Help me. The voice was clearer now, desperate and haunting. Amelia couldn't shake the feeling that Eliza was trying to reach her. Driven by an inexplicable urge, she knelt beside the fallen book and traced her fingers over the faded words. What happened to you, Eliza? She whispered. The air thickened, and a cold breeze swept through the aisle, sending a shiver down her spine. Find me. The whisper was now urgent, filled with pain. Where are you? Amelia asked, her heart racing. She glanced around the dimly lit space, searching for the source of the voice. As she stood up, the lights flickered and went out, plunging the library into darkness. Panic surged through her, and she fumbled for her phone, using its light to navigate the shadows. The whispers intensified, swirling around her like a ghostly chorus. Help me. Find me. With the beam of her phone, she illuminated a nearby staircase that led to the basement, a place she had never dared to explore. But the pull was undeniable. I have to help her, Amelia murmured to herself, stealing her nerves. She descended the creaking steps, the whispers guiding her deeper into the darkness. The air grew colder, and the smell of damp earth and decay enveloped her. As she reached the bottom, her phone flickered, revealing a small, cluttered room filled with old furniture and forgotten relics. In the far corner, she saw a figure, a translucent girl with long, flowing hair standing in front of a dusty mirror. Eliza's expression was one of longing, her eyes wide with desperation. Amelia, the ghostly figure called, her voice echoing in the stillness. I need your help. I can't leave until my story is told. What do you want me to do? Amelia asked, her heart pounding as she stepped closer. Find my journal. Eliza pleaded, her voice trembling. It's hidden within these walls. Only then will I be free. Amelia nodded, determination coursing through her. Where do I start? Above, in the archives, find the truth, Eliza whispered before fading away, leaving behind a lingering chill in the air. With renewed purpose, Amelia raced back up the stairs, her heart pounding in her chest. She hurried to the archives, scanning the shelves for anything that looked out of place. The rain continued to pound against the windows, and the wind howled outside, a symphony of chaos that matched her growing anxiety. After several frantic minutes, her eyes landed on a small, ornate box tucked behind a row of dusty encyclopedias. Her heart raced as she pulled it out, its surface adorned with intricate carvings of vines and flowers. She opened it carefully, revealing a delicate journal inside, its pages yellowed and brittle. Amelia felt a rush of energy as she opened the journal, and she began to read Eliza's story, how she had fallen in love with a boy from a rival family, their secret meetings hidden from disapproving parents. But jealousy and betrayal had torn them apart, leading to her untimely death, her spirit trapped in the library ever since. Tears filled Amelia's eyes as she read the tragic tale, and she understood what Eliza needed. You deserve to be free, she whispered, her heart aching for the lost girl. With the journal clutched tightly in her hands, Amelia rushed back to the basement. I found it, Eliza, she called out. I know your story now. The room grew colder, and Eliza's spirit materialized before her, a serene expression crossing her face. Thank you, she whispered, her voice filled with relief. You freed me. As the light from Amelia's phone flickered, Eliza's figure began to shimmer. Tell my story, and I will finally find peace. Amelia nodded, tears streaming down her cheeks. I will, I promise.
With a soft smile, Eliza's spirit faded into a cascade of sparkling light, and Amelia felt an overwhelming sense of calm wash over her. The whispers that had haunted the library were now silenced, replaced by a comforting stillness. Exhausted but fulfilled, Amelia climbed the stairs one last time, holding the journal tightly. The storm outside began to clear, and for the first time that night, she felt the weight of history lift from her shoulders. In the following days, she dedicated herself to writing Eliza's story, ensuring the girl's voice would never be forgotten. And as she shared the tale with the town, the library transformed from a place of dread into a sanctuary of hope, where the whispers of the past finally found their peace. Story number six. In the small town of Riverton, where the streets were lined with age-old trees and whispers of the past echoed through the night, there lay a cemetery known as Hollow Creek. It was a place shrouded in mystery and dread. Locals avoided it after dark, claiming that the spirits of the restless were known to wander among the graves, seeking solace or revenge. One chilly autumn evening, a group of friends, fueled by curiosity and a desire to prove their bravery, decided to explore the cemetery. Among them was Jake, a self-proclaimed skeptic who always dismissed tales of the supernatural. Ghosts? They're just stories, he scoffed, confidence oozing from every word. His friends, Sarah, Mike, and Lily, were less certain, but dared not back down in front of him. As they arrived at the cemetery, a dense fog rolled in, wrapping around the gravestones like a shroud. The air felt electric, charged with an unnameable energy. With flashlights in hand, they ventured deeper into the graveyard, the beams slicing through the thick fog. This place is creepy as hell, Sarah muttered, clutching her flashlight tightly. Are you sure we should be here? Come on, it's just a bunch of old rocks and dirt, Jake replied, though even he felt a twinge of unease. The chilling atmosphere was palpable, and the rustling leaves seemed to whisper secrets of the past. They walked past rows of tombstones, each one a testament to lives once lived. Most were faded and cracked, but one stood out, a grand monument that loomed above the others. It bore the name Edgar Winthrop, a man whose tragic death had become the stuff of local legend. According to the tales, he had been buried with a fortune, but his spirit was said to guard it fiercely, never allowing anyone to claim what he had lost. Let's go check it out, Mike suggested, a mischievous glint in his eye. Jake shrugged, eager to impress his friends. They approached the Winthrop tombstone, the air growing heavier with each step. As they neared, a sudden chill enveloped them. The temperature dropped dramatically, and an eerie silence fell over the cemetery, as if the very earth was holding its breath. Do you feel that? Lily whispered, her voice trembling. Feel what? Jake shot back, trying to mask his own anxiety. It's just cold. You're all being ridiculous. But before he could dismiss them further, a gust of wind blew through the cemetery, causing the branches of the nearby trees to sway violently. Jake's bravado faltered as he looked around, the shadows seeming to stretch and twist unnaturally. Suddenly, they heard a low moan, a sound that seemed to rise from the very ground beneath their feet. Panic gripped Sarah, and she grabbed Mike's arm, her eyes wide with terror. We need to go, now. But Jake, ever the skeptic, scoffed. It's just the wind. Let's stay a bit longer. It'll make for a great story. With a resigned sigh, the others stayed, though fear gnawed at their insides. As they stood near the tombstone, the air grew heavier, and a sudden burst of energy crackled through them. The ground trembled slightly as if something were stirring beneath the surface. All right, let's just get a quick picture for evidence, Mike suggested, holding up his phone. They gathered close to the tombstone, trying to shake off the unease that clung to them. As Mike snapped the photo, a loud crack echoed through the cemetery. They turned to see a shadowy figure emerging from behind the tombstone, its form shifting and swirling like smoke. A cold wave washed over them, and a voice, deep and mournful, filled the air. Leave this place. Jake's bravado shattered as he stumbled backward, his earlier confidence evaporating. What the hell is that? He gasped, his voice barely above a whisper. The figure loomed closer, its face obscured by the mist. You do not belong here. Leave or suffer the consequences. The ground shook again, sending tremors through the cemetery. The friends were paralyzed with fear, but instinct kicked in and they turned to flee. As they ran, the fog thickened, enveloping them in a chilling embrace. They could hear the sound of whispers all around, a cacophony of voices warning them to leave. Get out! Get out! They echoed, haunting and relentless. 
Lily tripped on a gravestone, her flashlight clattering to the ground. Help, she cried, fear straining her voice. Mike stopped, heart racing, and ran back to help her. The figure loomed closer, its presence overwhelming. Don't look back, Jake shouted, adrenaline surging through him. He grabbed Sarah's arm, pulling her along as they darted toward the entrance. Behind them, the air filled with a rush of cold, as if the spirit was pursuing them, determined to prevent their escape. You will pay for your intrusion, it howled, the sound echoing through the cemetery like a death knell. They burst through the wrought iron gates, gasping for breath, but the cemetery's whispers followed them into the night. Once outside, they ran until their legs burned, finally collapsing on the sidewalk far from Hollow Creek. What the hell was that? Mike panted, glancing back at the dark silhouette of the cemetery. Edgar Winthrop, Jake murmured, his bravado gone, replaced by a haunted expression. We shouldn't have gone there. Lily, still shaken, pulled out her phone. Did anyone get a picture? Just the one I took by the tombstone, Mike replied, retrieving his phone from his pocket. He opened the photo gallery, his hands trembling. But as he scrolled through the images, his heart sank. The picture showed them standing by the tombstone, but in the background, a faint silhouette loomed. An indistinct figure, shrouded in mist, its eyes glinting with a malevolent light. Maybe it's just a trick of the light, Jake said weakly, but the doubt lingered in his voice. As they sat there, catching their breath, the atmosphere around them felt heavy. The cemetery's presence loomed over them, a reminder of the unseen world just beyond their understanding. They realized that some places were better left undisturbed, their secrets buried in the earth waiting for the next curious souls to wander too close. As they walked away from Hollow Creek, the whispers faded into the night, but the chilling memory of the encounter lingered in their minds. They had ventured into the unknown and returned, but not without a price. A price they would carry with them forever. Story number seven. In a small town surrounded by dense woods, there stood an old Victorian house that had been abandoned for years. The townsfolk spoke of it in hushed whispers, warning each other of the dark history that clung to its walls like a thick fog. It was said that the previous owner, a reclusive woman named Eliza, had vanished without a trace, leaving behind only her belongings and a strange mirror in the attic. Intrigued by the stories and hoping to create content for her growing YouTube channel, Emma, a budding paranormal investigator, decided to explore the house. She had a knack for uncovering the strange and unexplained, and the prospect of discovering what happened to Eliza thrilled her. Armed with her camera and a flashlight, she approached the creaking front door, which groaned as she pushed it open. Inside, the air was thick with dust, and the smell of mildew permeated every corner. Emma moved cautiously through the dimly lit rooms, the floorboards creaking beneath her feet. As she filmed, she narrated the house's dark history, detailing Eliza's mysterious disappearance. Each room held its own secrets, with faded wallpaper and furniture draped in white sheets like ghosts waiting to be unveiled. Finally, um, she climbed the narrow staircase that spiraled up to the attic of her heart racing with excitement and fear. The door to the attic was slightly ajar, and as she pushed it open, the hinges screeched in protest. The space was cramped and cluttered with forgotten treasures. Old trunks, dusty books, and cobwebs hanging like veils. But what caught her eye was the large, ornate mirror standing against the far wall. The mirror was unlike anything Emma had ever seen. Its frame was intricately carved with swirling patterns that seemed to dance in the dim light. As she approached, she felt a strange pull, as if the mirror was beckoning her closer. She set her camera down and raised her hand to touch the surface. Suddenly, a chill enveloped the room, and the air grew heavy with an unnatural weight. Emma shivered but pressed her palm against the cold glass. To her shock, her reflection shimmered and rippled like water. She pulled her hand back, startled. What the hell? She muttered, shaking her head as if to dispel the disorienting effect. Taking a deep breath, she lifted her camera, wanting to capture this bizarre moment. As she filmed, she noticed something in the reflection, a shadow lurking just behind her, flickering at the edge of the frame. Emma turned quickly, but there was nothing there. Just the dusty attic, silent and still. Okay, that was weird, she said, forcing a nervous laugh as she returned to the mirror. But the shadow had reappeared, and this time it was clearer. A dark figure with no discernible features, standing just behind her. 
Emma's heart raced, a surge of adrenaline coursing through her veins. Is anyone here? She called out, her voice echoing in the empty space. Silence responded. She turned once more, but again, nothing but shadows and dust greeted her. Determined to confront whatever presence was in the attic, Emma focused her camera on the mirror. If there's something here, show yourself, she challenged, her voice steady despite the fear gnawing at her insides. The mirror's surface rippled violently, distorting her reflection. It was as if the glass had become a portal, and Emma could see the shadow moving closer, creeping towards her. Panic surged through her, and she stumbled backward, knocking over an old trunk. The sound echoed in the confined space, drowning out her racing heartbeat. Just then, the shadow lunged, reaching through the mirror as if it were made of smoke. Emma screamed and turned to flee, but the attic door slammed shut with a deafening bang, trapping her inside. She banged on the door, desperation clawing at her throat. Let me out! Let me out! Her frantic cries were swallowed by the attic's eerie silence. The shadow moved closer, its form becoming more defined, twisting and writhing as it drew nearer. Emma could feel its cold breath on the back of her neck, sending a shiver down her spine. Desperate, she darted to the mirror, her eyes wide with terror. What do you want? She yelled at her own reflection, now distorted and warped by the shadow's presence. Suddenly, the mirror shimmered again, and Emma saw a flicker of a scene play out. A woman, Eliza, standing before the mirror, tears streaming down her face. She looked heartbroken, trapped in a cycle of despair. Help me, she whispered, her voice echoing in the attic. I am lost, trapped between worlds. Emma's heart ached for the woman she had only heard about in stories. Eliza, I want to help you. She cried out, reaching towards the mirror, but the shadow surged forward, engulfing her hand. Pain shot through her arm, and she stumbled back, gasping. As the shadow closed in, Emma realized it wasn't just Eliza who was trapped. The shadow was a manifestation of her sorrow, her fear, and her regrets. You need to let go, Emma shouted, the weight of Eliza's despair crashing down on her. The shadow paused as if considering her words. Emma took a deep breath, summoning every ounce of courage. I will help you, but you have to help yourself first. The mirror rippled again, and for a brief moment, Emma saw herself standing beside Eliza, both of them reflecting in the glass. It was then that she felt the weight lift slightly, the oppressive darkness loosening its grip. The shadow hesitated, swirling in confusion, as if it were torn between two worlds. I'm here with you, Emma urged. You're not alone. Let go of the pain. With that, the shadow recoiled, swirling chaotically before dissipating like mist. Eliza's figure flickered, a faint smile gracing her lips as the shadow finally released its hold. In that moment, the attic filled with a brilliant light, illuminating the darkness that had lingered for so long. Emma watched in awe as Eliza's spirit began to ascend, free at last from the burden that had shackled her to the world. The mirror's surface returned to normal, reflecting the light of the attic rather than shadows of despair. Breathless and shaken, Emma reached for the camera, her hands trembling. She had captured the moment, the light, the release, the freedom. As she stepped back, the attic door creaked open slowly, revealing the night beyond. Stepping into the hallway, Emma felt the chill lift from the house. She turned one last time to the attic, a sense of peace settling over her. The mirror had held more than just reflections. It had contained a soul longing for release. As she left the house behind, Emma couldn't shake the feeling that she had changed somehow, that she had not only helped Eliza, but had also faced her own fears in the process. The darkness that once haunted the Victorian house began to fade, and as she walked away, Emma knew she would carry that light with her always. Story number eight. In the small, forgotten town of Eldridge, whispers of a ghostly train circulated among the locals like a chilling folklore. It was said that at the stroke of midnight, a phantom train would thunder down the abandoned tracks, its whistle echoing through the air, carrying with it the souls of those who had met untimely ends. Sam, a skeptical journalist new to the town, found the stories ridiculous, yet oddly intriguing. He decided to investigate the legend, eager to write an article that would expose the truth behind the myth. Equipped with his camera and notepad, he ventured to the old train station one gloomy night, determined to capture evidence of the supernatural. The station was a relic of a bygone era, its wooden structure decaying, overgrown with weeds and vines. 
The air was thick with anticipation as he set up his equipment on the platform, the wind howling through the trees surrounding the abandoned tracks. As the clock struck midnight, a heavy silence fell over the area. Sam could feel the hairs on the back of his neck standing on end. Suddenly, the ground trembled beneath him. The air crackled with energy, and in the distance, a faint light began to appear on the horizon. The sound of metal grinding against metal echoed through the night, and Sam's heart raced with both excitement and fear. He pointed his camera toward the approaching light, convinced he was about to witness something extraordinary. As the light grew brighter, the train emerged from the darkness, a ghostly apparition with flickering lights and faded paint. It glided silently along the tracks, its cars filled with shadowy figures staring out into the night, their faces twisted in expressions of despair. Sam's breath caught in his throat as he watched the haunting scene unfold before him. But just as quickly as it had appeared, the train began to fade away, the figures inside dissolving into the mist. Panic surged through Sam, and he stumbled back, trying to comprehend what he had just witnessed. He could feel a presence surrounding him, cold and unnerving, as if the very spirits of the train were watching him. Desperate for answers, Sam approached the tracks, hoping to find some clue about the train's origins. He examined the ground closely and noticed something gleaming among the rocks, a tarnished pocket watch. It had the initials JM engraved on the back. His heart raced as he thought of the stories he'd heard about the train's passengers, souls who were forever lost. Determined to uncover the truth, Sam took the watch back to his car and began researching the initials. After hours of digging through old newspapers and town records, he discovered that JM belonged to James Mercer, a young man who had vanished nearly 50 years ago after a tragic accident at the station. He was last seen boarding a train that never arrived at its destination. The following night, Sam returned to the station, the pocket watch clutched tightly in his hand. He felt compelled to confront the ghostly presence he had encountered. As midnight approached, he positioned himself on the platform, waiting for the train to arrive again. The air was electric, and just as the clock struck 12, he heard the familiar sound of the train approaching. This time, he was ready. As the ghostly train glided into view, he raised his camera, determined to capture proof of the paranormal. But as he looked through the lens, he felt a cold breath on his neck, and the camera fell from his hands. The figures inside the train were clearer now, their faces etched with sorrow. Among them, he recognized James Mercer, his eyes pleading for help. Help us! A chorus of voices echoed through the night, their sorrow palpable. Sam's heart raced as he understood that these were not just lost souls, they were victims of a tragedy that had been buried in time. What do you need? He shouted, desperation clawing at his throat. Find the truth. James's ghostly figure urged, pointing toward the darkened woods that bordered the station. The tracks are cursed. You must uncover what happened that night. The train began to fade again, but this time Sam felt a surge of determination. He would not let their cries go unanswered. Gathering his courage, he followed the direction James had pointed, plunging into the dense forest. The underbrush was thick, and the air grew heavier as he ventured deeper into the woods. After a short walk, he stumbled upon a clearing, where an old, rusted piece of machinery lay half buried in the ground. It looked like the remnants of a forgotten train car, a relic of the past. As he approached, he could see strange markings on the ground, as if something had been dragged through the dirt. Following the trail, he uncovered fragments of shattered glass and bits of decaying wood. Sam's heart raced as he pieced together the remnants of a terrible accident, a collision between two trains long hidden from the townsfolk. Suddenly, the air turned frigid, and shadows began to swirl around him. Help us, the voices echoed again, stronger this time. Tell our story. Sam fell to his knees, realizing that the spirits were trapped because their story had been forgotten. He took out his phone and began recording, speaking directly to the camera. I am here to tell the story of James Mercer and the lost souls of Eldridge. Their lives were taken too soon, and their voices deserve to be heard. As he spoke, the shadows enveloped him, and he felt a sense of peace wash over the clearing. The whispers turned to soft murmurs, and for the first time he sensed gratitude emanating from the spirits. When he returned to the station, the clock chimed midnight once more. This time, however, 
the train did not arrive. Instead, a warm light filled the air, illuminating the platform with a sense of tranquility. Sam smiled, knowing he had honored the souls that had been lost. In the following weeks, he published his article, sharing the story of James Mercer and the tragedy that had unfolded so many years ago. The townsfolk were shocked, and a memorial was erected to remember the victims of the accident. The whispers that had haunted the train station faded away, replaced by a peaceful silence. As for Sam, he continued to visit the library and the station, feeling a connection to the past that would forever shape his understanding of the town. The midnight train may no longer roam the tracks, but the story of its lost souls would live on, carried in the hearts of those who remembered. Story number nine. In the heart of a forgotten town, nestled between the woods and the river, stood an old shop with peeling paint and dusty windows. The sign above the door read, Alder's Curiosities a quaint name that belied the dark history hidden within. The townsfolk whispered stories about the shop and its owner, Elias Alder, a reclusive doll maker known for crafting lifelike dolls that were said to possess an uncanny presence. Every child in town wanted one of Elias's creations, but parents often hesitated. Rumors swirled that the dolls were more than mere toys, they were vessels for the spirits of the departed. Those who ventured too close to the shop claimed to hear faint whispers emanating from within, beckoning them to come closer. One chilly autumn evening, a group of four friends, Clara, Ben, Sarah, and Tom, decided to explore the old shop after hearing tales of its cursed dolls. Clara, an aspiring journalist, was particularly eager to uncover the truth. I've heard that the last owner of one of Elias's dolls went missing, she said, her eyes gleaming with excitement. We have to check it out. The others exchanged nervous glances, but ultimately agreed. They arrived at Alder's Curiosities just as twilight painted the sky in shades of purple and orange. The air was thick with anticipation as they approached the shop, the door creaking ominously as they stepped inside. The interior was dimly lit, filled with the scent of wood shavings and dust. Dolls of every shape and size lined the shelves, their glassy eyes seeming to follow the friends as they moved. Some wore delicate dresses, while others were dressed like miniature versions of famous figures. Clara's heart raced as she took in the collection, each doll more unsettling than the last. Look at this one, Ben said, picking up a porcelain doll with dark, haunting eyes. It looks like it's staring right at me. Put it down, Sarah exclaimed, a shiver running down her spine. These things give me the creeps, Tom laughed. Come on, they're just dolls. What's the worst that could happen? As they wandered deeper into the shop, they stumbled upon a back room. The door was slightly ajar, revealing shelves filled with half-finished dolls and tools scattered about. Clara felt an inexplicable pull to enter. Let's see what's in there, she urged, pushing the door open. The room was even darker, the only light coming from a small window that barely illuminated the workspace. Clara spotted a doll sitting on the workbench, its features strikingly realistic. It had long, dark hair and wore a tattered dress that seemed to shimmer in the dim light. Wow, this one's incredible, she whispered, reaching out to touch it. As her fingers brushed against the doll's porcelain cheek, a chill raced through her, and the air in the room shifted. Suddenly, a low voice echoed from behind her, sending a jolt of fear through her body. Do not disturb her. The friends turned to see an old man standing in the doorway, Elias Alder. His eyes were sharp and piercing and his presence filled the room with an unsettling energy. You should not be here, he warned, his voice gravely. Clara stepped back, heart pounding. We, we just wanted to see your work. Elias's gaze shifted to the doll on the table and his expression hardened. That doll is not finished. It holds a darkness that should remain locked away. Ignoring the warning, Clara felt drawn to the doll's captivating beauty. What do you mean? She asked, curiosity overcoming her fear. Elias hesitated, as if weighing his words. Years ago, I lost a child. In my grief, I poured all my sorrow into that doll, hoping to bring her spirit back. But instead, I trapped something else within it, a malevolent force that craves life. Tom, still skeptical, stepped forward. Come on, it's just a doll. There's no such thing as curses or spirits. Elias's expression darkened. Foolishness can lead to tragedy. Leave now while you still can. The warning hung in the air, thick with tension. Clara felt the room grow colder, the shadows deepening around them. She turned to leave, 
but before she could reach the door, the doll's eyes seemed to flicker, a spark of life igniting within. Clara, a voice whispered, sweet and melodic. It was not Elias, but something far more sinister. Did you hear that? Sarah gasped, fear etched on her face. We need to get out of here. Suddenly, the lights flickered, and the dolls around them seemed to shift, their faces contorting into grotesque expressions. Clara's heart raced as she turned to flee, but the door slammed shut, trapping them inside. Let us go, Ben shouted, pounding on the door. Clara, what did you do? Tom cried, panic creeping into his voice. Nothing. I just touched the doll, Clara replied, feeling the weight of dread settle upon her. The whispers grew louder, echoing in their minds. Stay with us, forever. Elias's eyes widened in horror as he rushed toward the door, pounding against it. No, you mustn't listen to them. But it was too late. The room swirled with darkness, the air thickening until it was almost suffocating. Clara felt a cold hand grasp her wrist, pulling her toward the doll. Join us, it beckoned, the voice a seductive whisper. Desperation surged through her, and with a sudden burst of strength, she tore herself away from the grasp and charged at the door. We need to get out, she screamed. With Elias's help, they managed to force the door open, tumbling out into the safety of the shop. The air was lighter outside, the night filled with the sounds of crickets and rustling leaves. But as they turned to leave, Clara glanced back at the shop. The dolls stared back at her, their eyes glinting in the moonlight. Never speak of this again, Elias warned, his expression grave. You have no idea what you've unleashed. Uh, the friends hurried away, their hearts pounding in their chests. As they reached the edge of town, Clara felt a lingering unease settle over her. Weeks passed, and life returned to normal, or so they thought. But one by one, Clara's friends began to experience strange occurrences. Sarah awoke to find a doll resembling herself sitting at the foot of her bed. Ben received a letter in a handwriting that wasn't his own, warning him to leave town. Tom began to hear whispers echoing in the silence, calling his name in the dead of night. Clara knew that their encounter with Elias Alder and his cursed dolls had left a mark on them. She tried to ignore the signs, but deep down she felt the pull of the doll she had touched, the malevolent force stirring within her, awakening a darkness she couldn't comprehend. One stormy night, Clara sat in her room, consumed by the weight of her thoughts. The wind howled outside, rattling the windows as thunder rumbled in the distance. Suddenly, she heard a soft knock on her door. Clara, the voice called, sweet and familiar. Fear coursed through her veins. Who's there? She asked, trying to keep her voice steady. Let me in. It urged, the voice echoing the same haunting melody she had heard in the shop. Heart racing, Clara crept toward the door, the temptation to open it nearly overwhelming. But she remembered Elias's warning, the terror that had gripped her friends. She backed away, shaking her head. Leave me alone, she shouted, but the whispers continued, growing more insistent. Join us. Forever. The shadows in her room deepened, swirling around her like a living entity. Clara felt the darkness closing in, and with a surge of adrenaline, she grabbed her phone and called Sarah. Something's wrong. We need to meet, she urged, her voice trembling. Clara, I can't. It's here with me. Sarah's voice was frantic. I can feel it. It's in my room. The line went dead. Panic flooded Clara as she realized they were being hunted by the very darkness they had awakened. No, she screamed. But the shadows answered, wrapping around her tightly, pulling her toward the door. Join us. In that moment, Clara understood the true horror of the dollmaker's curse. They had disturbed something ancient and malevolent, and now it sought to claim them all. With one final burst of strength, Clara charged toward the window, throwing it open. She climbed out into the stormy night, rain pelting her face as she ran into the woods. Behind her, the whispers faded, but she knew they would always be there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for the moment she let her guard down. And as the storm raged on, she realized that the curse of the dollmaker was not merely a story to frighten children. It was a dark reality, a haunting that would follow her for the rest of her days. Story number 10. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the empty train platform, Sarah stood waiting for the last train of the night. The air was thick with an eerie stillness, and but the only sound was the distant echo of her heels clicking against the concrete. She had spent the evening at a friend's party, enjoying herself a bit too much, and now regretting her decision to take public transportation home so late. 
Checking her watch, she noted that the train was running late. She glanced at the old station clock, its hands frozen in time, as if even the passage of minutes had grown weary of waiting. She shivered, pulling her coat tighter around her. The dim overhead lights flickered intermittently, adding to the unease that prickled at her skin. Just then, the distant sound of a train whistle pierced the silence. Sarah looked down the tracks, and in the distance, she spotted the glowing headlights of the approaching train. Relief washed over her, but as the train rolled into the station, something felt off. The carriages were dark, almost foreboding, and there were no signs of life inside. As the train came to a stop, the doors slid open with a soft hiss, revealing an empty carriage. A chill ran down Sarah's spine, but she reminded herself that it was late, and the last train would naturally have fewer passengers. Stepping inside, she found a seat near the window and settled in, her heart still racing from the unnerving weight. The train lurched forward, and she watched the platform recede into the darkness, the flickering lights fading behind her. As the train picked up speed, she pulled out her phone to check for any messages. But the screen... The screen was blank. There was no service in the middle of nowhere. Minutes turned into what felt like hours as the train rattled along the tracks. Sarah felt an odd sensation creeping over her, a sense of being watched. She glanced around, her heart pounding in her chest, but the carriage remained empty. Just as she was about to dismiss her fears, she noticed a flicker in the reflection of the window. It was a fleeting image, a shadowy figure sitting directly across from her, though the seat was empty. Her breath caught in her throat and she turned quickly, but there was nothing there. Just the emptiness of the carriage and the rhythmic sound of the train rolling along the tracks. She tried to shake it off, focusing on the scenery outside the window. The landscape blurred past, dark trees standing like silent sentinels in the night. But when she turned back to the window, the figure was there again this time clearer, its features obscured but undeniably present. A feeling of dread washed over her. Hello? She called out, her voice trembling slightly. No answer came. Just the low hum of the train. She felt a knot tightening in her stomach as she decided to move to another carriage. As she stood up, the train suddenly jolted, and she lost her balance, stumbling backward into her seat. The lights flickered again, and for a moment, the carriage plunged into darkness. Panic surged within her as she fumbled for her phone. When the lights returned, the figure was gone, leaving only an unsettling silence behind. Gathering her courage, Sarah forced herself to walk to the next carriage, convinced that staying alone would only heighten her fear. As she moved through the narrow passage, she felt a cold breeze rush past her, sending chills down her spine. She quickly glanced back over her shoulder half expecting to see the figure trailing her, but there was nothing. Arriving at the next carriage, she hesitated before stepping inside, her heart racing with uncertainty. This carriage, too, was empty. She settled into a seat near the door, hoping it would feel safer. But the oppressive silence only deepened her unease. She watched the door slide shut, sealing her inside as the train sped through the darkness. As she sat there, listening to the train's monotonous clatter, Sarah felt the sensation of being watched return, stronger this time. She glanced out the window and gasped. There, on the platform they had just left, stood a figure, a pale woman with long, dark hair hanging limp over her face, wearing a tattered dress. The woman stared directly at her, an eerie expression on her face. Sarah's heart raced as she turned back to the inside of the train, but she knew she had to look again. When she turned back, the woman had vanished, leaving only the faint image of her lingering in Sarah's mind. Suddenly, the train screeched to a halt, jerking Sarah in her seat. The lights flickered once more, plunging the carriage into darkness. She could hear the distant sound of the train's metal creaking, the unnatural stillness surrounding her like a shroud. The train conductor's voice crackled over the intercom, echoing through the emptiness. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be stopping for a few moments. Please remain seated. Her heart sank. It was then that she heard it. A faint whisper, almost like a soft cry, coming from somewhere deep within the carriage. Help me. The voice was weak, full of despair. Is anyone there? Sarah called out, fear clutching at her throat. But there was only silence in response. She considered her options, torn between staying put and escaping the train. The lights flickered back to life, illuminating the carriage once more. 
But when Sarah turned to the doorway, she saw her, the woman from the platform, standing just outside, staring at her with hollow eyes. A cold wave of dread washed over Sarah, and she felt her blood run cold. What do you want? She shouted, her voice shaking. The woman lifted a finger and pointed directly at Sarah. The air grew heavy, and for a moment everything seemed to freeze. Then, the woman opened her mouth, and a cacophony of voices spilled out, all echoing the same words. Help me. You must help me. Panic surged through Sarah as the train jolted again, this time violently. She stumbled, clutching the seat for support, and realized the train was moving again, but not toward the next station. It felt as if they were going backward, returning to the darkness from which they had just come. No, 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 she screamed, but her words were lost in the chaos. The lights flickered one last time, and the last image burned into her mind was the woman's anguished face as the train slid into darkness. With a deafening crash, everything went black. When Sarah woke, she was lying on the train platform, surrounded by debris. The sun was rising, casting a pale light over the wreckage. Dazed and confused, she stumbled to her feet. The train was gone. Only the echo of the woman's cries lingered in the air. She glanced around, searching for signs of life. Other passengers emerged from the shadows, all looking as bewildered as she felt. They, too, seemed unaware of what had just happened, yet they all carried the same haunted look in their eyes. As she left the station, Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that the train would return one day, carrying the lost souls of those who had vanished within its depths, forever trapped between the realms of the living and the dead, waiting for someone to help them find peace.